Hi, I'm Jenny Trumpa. And I'm Tonyo Gonzalez. And we're the co-hosts of Mindset and Trading Podcasts, where we bring guests who help us master our mindset in trading, inspire us to create financial freedom, and teach us how to compound our money as a day trader. Today on the podcast, we are very happy to have with us Cora Woodman. Cora is a mindset coach, a serial entrepreneur, a successful networker, a mom, and a day trader. We look forward to hearing from her some of the mindset and success strategies she uses for herself and for those she coaches and mentors. Her passion in life is helping other people become successful by quantum leaping their results. Cora, we are so excited to have you here today. Welcome to the show. Welcome, Cora. Thank you so much. (laughs) I'm really excited to be here. We are excited to have you here as well. Thank you for joining us. So I just want to ask a few questions and really, I think one of the things that I, um, I find so beneficial about having you here today to share your story is that you are a mindset coach and you are a day trader. And so it's going to be really um, fascinating to uh, hear some of the tools and some of the breakthroughs that you've had in your trading journey. So would you just start off the call and just let us know a little bit about yourself? Let us know your story and how you did get involved in trading. Okay, well, thank you again for having me. This is very exciting. Um, I have a quite a unique story to my journey into entrepreneurship. And I think I'll start there just to give a little bit of context and perspective. Um, sure. When after I was the regular person with the nine to five corporate job, I had every intention on climbing the corporate ladder. I had mainly uh, worked in sales and we, um, I married for 21 years this year. And Congratulations. Got, thank you. <laughs> when we got married and had kids, unbeknownst to me, all three of our children end up having chronic um, life-threatening condition of asthma and very severe. And when our first daughter was born, one of us ended up having to make a decision of who was going to leave their job. And that had to be me because I was the mom and the primary caregiver and it just, it made more sense. So, um, but I wasn't one, um, I needed something fulfilling and I love to be around people and have, um, and just, and have something to focus on outside the family. So I started my entrepreneurial journey, um, from home after leaving my corporate job and I dabbled in real estate. I dabbled in network marketing and anything that I could do to earn money without having to show up and be tied Monday to Friday, eight to five and do all of that stuff. And fast forward 10 years, uh, when our oldest daughter was 10 years old, she her lung function plummeted to about 50%, which is really significant and mm-hmm. didn't recover. And we needed to move our family um, to Vancouver Island where the air quality was good for her to breathe. So it's interesting when all the life throws you all these curveballs. So now all of a sudden we need money, our life circumstance, not everybody can identify with what it's like to have a child with um, a life threatening illness like that. But I think what a lot of people identify is when life throws you a curveball and money is preventing you from making that decision of how to benefit yourself and your family and give you flex and freedom. It's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. And having flexibility and freedom and not having financial constraints is massive. And so that even drove me further because in order for my husband to join us, he had to quit his job. So then what? So then I decided to go full tilt into entrepreneurship. And through that, I developed some very significant skill sets to being an entrepreneur. And in my daughter's health is fine now where we live. All three of our kids are, are doing well. Thank you so um, much yeah. for Con- sharing that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they went from being on a ton of medicine to no medicine virtually. And we still have blips and have to help them. But I learned to love the flexibility and freedom of making money from my phone and from my computer. And prior to being pushed into a situation, I had always heard of people doing it, but didn't know how they did it. Like, how do people trade? How do people make money online? How is this even possible? What does this look like? And when you come from a historical government nine to five job, having access to the people doing the things that you want to do is such a big deal. 
Absolutely. Right. And so the more I ended up getting into these network of people um, who think a little bit outside the box, aren't so tied up with the employee mindset, mainstream, everything, my world got expanded. So in 2020, um, I have a friend who was like, hey, I know you're an entrepreneur. I know you like flexibility and freedom. I have this opportunity to learn how to trade. Do you want to check it out? And when I first saw it, I was like, yes, 100%. Yes. If I can make money from my phone and I can learn this skill set that nobody, and I don't need to be in sales, also, um, I'm really excited about this. And I had always wanted to learn. My husband, on the other hand, when I told, I came home and I was like, you can't, you won't even believe this. I found a place where we can learn how to make money from our phone and we can trade. And he looked at me and he's like, uh, no, we are not doing this. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, this is amazing. And all he was concerned about was my time. He just, his first thing was like, how much more can you take on? How much time do you actually have? And does this actually work? All fair questions. And I was like, I see the power, I see the potential. And if other people are doing it, why not us? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I, I really believe in opportunities that way. I'm like, okay, if you're doing it, I can do this. Like there's, I, I see no issue. And so in 2020, him and I set on the course to learn how to be, I, I didn't have the idea of being a pro trader. That was never my goal, but I wanted to be a profitable amateur mm-hmm. trader that could change my life. Mm-hmm. And when I found out that I could turn, if I learned the skill to trade my money to 3% a day, which is still a really good skill set. I mean, you have to yes. be a skilled trader to earn 3%. Yes. But you can compound a thousand into 2.1 million mm-hmm. in less than a year. At that percentage, I was like, come on. Even if it <laughs> takes me five years, yes, it didn't matter. I was not looking to get rich quick. I was just interested in learning the skill to compound my money because then no one can take it away. And ironically, at the beginning of 2020, I mean, nobody knew what was coming. Nobody knew what was going to happen and the economy and jobs. I just was on this trajectory of, I think this is important. I'd really like to do this. So that's how, that's how it all began. That's like from start to now where we are. And I love that you shared that. And I just want to highlight that last little nugget that you said, because I feel like that's just such a, an important mindset strategy right there is what you said about compounding your money from 1,000 to 2.1 million. It can be done with 3% growth per day in less than a year. And if it takes you five years to learn the skills to be able to actually do that, it still is worth it. And not a lot of people come into trading with that mindset. For some of them, it is a quick, a get rich quick, be successful quick, um, game for them where in actuality that can happen, but in actuality, there's also another side of it too, which is the longevity and the endurance part of it. So, so speaking about, we can go into that a little bit too. um, And maybe that's one of the things we can talk about is that endurance that's needed for trading, but you're here in your journey. You just, um, you just, you know, we were here in 2020, kind of how you got into trading. Um, since you got in and you you told us a little bit about, you know, why you're in it with for your kids' health so that you can be with them to alleviate yourself from needing to be someplace else from eight to five and really have that quality of life that you want to set up for yourself that is by your design. And um, what have... What have some of your successes been with trading since you started in 2020? And what have some of your struggles been since you began in 2020? Sort of, can you carry us through a little bit of the journey since you started in 2020 and what that's looked like for you? Well, I, it's really, it's really multifaceted. So I would consider myself still a beginner trader. Um, And what I think my biggest success is, is providing the opportunity for my husband to have an exit strategy from his job. Um, because when I got started, it was funny because he said, no, I'm not going to do this. And I said, that's fine. You don't have to. But 
I'm doing it. <laughs> I was like, this is an, uh, I'm like, I actually have to try. I'm going to do this. Cause I knew that if I went first, he would probably pique his interest. And I felt like he would be in the, ama- I saw a tremendous potential for him. So I started almost as I, I saw the potential and I saw everything amazing about it. And my hope was that my husband would catch the fever, which my plan worked. And when I got into <laughs> the education and I started learning everything and he was watching me do it. And I, then he started plugging in as well. And his journey went way faster than mine. Hmm. Um, and he is now a, a profitable amateur trader, which is completely changing the landscape of our family. For me personally, I have always wanted to learn the skill set. So the fact that I'm doing it is profound for me. And I'm a little bit behind him in terms of the execution of what that looks like in terms of being profitable. I am profitable, just not as quick as him because nothing is perfect in trading. The market is always right. And Mm -hmm. when it's teaching me my lessons, it's usually because I'm not um, disciplined enough. And I, it's so interesting with you know, there's certain areas in my life where I'm extremely disciplined. And in this one, I am, I like to test the waters a little bit just because I learn that way. I'm like, okay, well, if I fudge this a little bit, and if I don't follow this rule, what will happen? And so I find myself testing the waters a lot, which changes the outcome because I have never been a part of um, an industry that is so rigid with the discipline, I guess is what it is. Yeah. And you, you have to follow the rules. And if you don't, it's just luck. Yes. Yes. And it's not sustainable and you have no way of predicting what's going to happen if you just go based on luck. And that is the get rich quick is the lucky strategy is that one minute it's there. And then the next minute it's gone. And I'm not a fan of, I'm not a fan of luck. I like to be extremely goal driven and oriented based on rules of the people that have gone before me. Absolutely great. So that's what I find to be um my biggest struggle probably is allocating enough time to be dedicated to it. Yes. Yes, yes. And what would that yeah. look like? The learning component, right? So maybe I would, I would say an hour to two a day. There's mm-hmm. a dedicated hour or two a day, if you want to learn faster, I mean, you can put in more time, but if people think that they can be profitable amateur traders with less than an hour a day, they're joking themselves. Like I just don't see it. They might, there might be one or two people who could definitely pull that off for the masses. I just don't think it's possible, especially when you're learning from scratch, because the mindset component is so significant. And even the professional traders have a dedicated set amount of time that they put in. There's nobody who's saying that they don't put in the time. Right. Was that what what your husband had versus you or what is what he he had also? What He had time. He he has time. time. I do not. (laughs) Yeah. So for full, for full transparency and context, my husband doesn't work um, in the same city that we live in. So he leaves to go away for work for two weeks and then he comes home for two weeks. So I, single parent or three children Mm -hmm. while he's at work. And I have my other businesses that I run. And so for me, what I started doing was I have to get up at 5am as dedicated time to trade. So if I don't get up and do my education and my learning between five and seven, it's really hard to make it happen. So just a mindset trick and a mindset hack. If you want something to be a priority, you have to actually schedule time for it. And that means that you have to let go of other things at the end. My alone time is either when my kids go to bed at nighttime and I have an hour or two, or I go to bed so that I can get up and trade in the morning. And and that has to be the priority depending on what my goals are. So that's how I shuffled my day. Cause, and for me personally, by the end of the day, I'm at capacity. I can't sit down and invest in education. I'm too tired. So when I make the time in the morning, um, I get my education in. And whereas my husband, when he's away for two weeks, he doesn't, he's on completely on his own agenda. And in terms of the mindset, what do you think he has different than you or in terms of strengths and qualities? And I I do think it's time um, for him. He doesn't struggle with the putting the time in. I would think his mindset is... Mainly time, what would you say? Well, and his mindset with the trading piece of it is he's not as structured with the rules as I am. So if you're going to look for, 
if you were to ask him where he struggles with, it's getting following the rules and not just testing the one. When he follows the rules, he makes anywhere between two and 10% daily consistently. When he decides to be like, oh, what about it? What if I try this? Or what if I just ignore this? Or what if I do this? Then that's where it can go. A risk management, like all the things that can change yeah. for trading. So there's a couple of things that I want to highlight as well. And I want to, yeah, thank you so much for sharing yes. all of this. The um, One of the things that I want to kind of pull out and highlight again is this, this idea of being a single mom with three kids, because that's me, <laughs> right? So single mom, three kids. So I relate to your story so much. So I want to just kind of highlight and, and reiterate everything that you just mentioned for the other moms, dads out there who are parenting and they're running the show and they've got to find the pockets of time because this is part of the endurance game that we are in, right? And I just want to go back to what you had mentioned before with if it takes me five years, it is a skill set that I'm willing to, to that I, I desire to acquire because I know what it can provide for me and my family. And if it takes me a little bit longer, that's what I'm hearing from you, then maybe the person running alongside me or next to me, that's okay because I know where I stand. I know how to find my balance in my life. And when I'm in, I'm in, right? And so just giving that um, sort of hope to anyone else out there listening that says, you know what, I'm too busy to do this. I don't have the ability to do this. I'm whatever excuses there they have for themselves, setting aside that time, putting in the, the work, the focus, the learning, the dedication and the consistency, right? So it's, I wake up as well at 5.30 every morning and I'm on the charts. And so it's a Monday through Friday gig and even Saturday mornings, I'm, I'm doing my learning. Um, I have an accountability partner where we meet twice a week to go over things and review things. So there's, there's definitely ways to make it happen. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate that. And then it sounds like also with your um, husband's journey, part of what he's experiencing as well is really focusing on that, the, the rules, right? So knowing that there's rules applied to trading and sticking consistently with them. And that's when we see the wins. Let's talk a little bit about maybe some of the, the just what you had mentioned with the mindset of like, oh, well, if I, if I test the waters, um, what have you found that that brings to you or doesn't bring to you when you're in terms of trading? I, it's really interesting. So from a mindset perspective, I am of the philosophy of how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you're a person who doesn't really follow the rules ever, has no structure in their life, you know, is kind of loosey goosey about everything to if if you come at trading in the same way, you're going to get the same kind of results, right? Like that's how I see it. And I, the roller coaster of emotions that come with trading when you do something and you know, you shouldn't, I, you know, the rule and you decide to execute something different than the rule. There's uh, for me, I just try and take a deep breath and say, okay, let's just regroup here. Think about why you did this. Why aren't you following the rules? And then one tip that I give my clients that I'm working with that I use for myself is I always ask myself, mm -hmm. does a seven figure trader do this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then I make a different decision the next time. And it's a work in progress, depending on what the rules are, right? Like if we take Teresa, for example, who we all know and love, who she's a machine when it comes to following the rules and she's the seven figure trader, right? Yeah. So you just get clues from the people who are going ahead of you. But if you're executing, so that's because otherwise it's easy to get flustered. It's easy to have your confidence shaked. It's easy to reevaluate your money mindset. It's reevaluating is, am I okay to do this? Am I smart enough to do this? All of this, anyone can do this. We just have to ask ourselves if we're acting and feeling like a seven figure trader. And if the answer is no, then that's what needs to be fixed. It's it's not how smart we are. It's not where we came from. It's not our value. It's not every emotion that can come up when you're trading and oh, I'm going to take a revenge trade or I'm going to do this or I'm frustrated or all that we all feel the things, but it's so much easier to get refocused when we say, am I a seven figure trader? And am I executing 
how that person would, then you get back on track and just don't focus on the mistakes, acknowledge them, learn from them, and then just focus on what you need to do. So that's usually what I do. It can be um, when it's not exciting, I usually find I'm making the most money. It's Mm. when it's super exciting and I'm like, my feelings are elevated and I'm either really frustrated or really happy. I'm like, okay, let's just do a self-check here. This isn't like, this isn't gambling. It's not at a casino. We're not on a roller coaster ride. We need consistency and that execution daily, that steady eddy to make this go. And Teresa role models that she's very even methodical rule following And so that for me is the biggest sign of where my emotions need to be, right? Everybody's, everybody's gauge, their yardstick of measure is going to be at a different place. But when you're watching the people who have gone before you with that skill set, you have, we have to be objective and notice what they're doing that we're not, and then emulate that when we're executing the trades. Does that make sense? Absolutely. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Am I, would a seven figure trader do this? And is that what I'm, am I doing? And, and if not, then get back on track. Totally. I think that trading can be a beautiful mirror. And just like you said, into how we're behaving into in our lives. And there are several things that I know that trading has helped me clean up. I've gotten organized in certain areas that I was disorganized in before. My time management skills are becoming much better. There's so many ways that trading has helped me improve outside of the charts because it 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 does show you so much about your person, your personality, the way you're approaching the charts is, is also the way that you approach life. And so it's just, um, a very beautiful, uh, relationship between the two, if you allow it to be. And, um, you know, also the frustrations, you know, the emotions that go, that go with it, the roller coasters that go with it, the more that you see those behaviors and those reactions, Uh, show up in the charts, you also can see them showing up in life. And so when you begin to emotionally get yourself in in a calm state in a focused state and a disciplined state, the more you can do that, you know, within yourself, the more that it helps you as well with that trading journey. And you're right. I've seen Teresa, you know, have um, guide us through trades that are 5% 5% trades and then also, you know, 2% losses maybe one after another and the emotions that can come up with that. I would anticipate another human to show emotion around it and it's very neutral. And so it's a great, yeah, a very great teacher. Yeah. How how well. is that how has that been for you? Uh, when you lose, we had Jake on the show and he said like, well, you lose, you you know it's part of the it's part of the game and then he keeps going. For you when you have lost what what is your reaction or what is your process what is things that you tell yourself well i don't like losing i'll be very welcome honest. to the club no just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like losing um but i think this is the difference uh, in my experience and in my world how you manage those losses dictate everything right and i was going to say that entrepreneurship trading day trading financial growth, all of that is um, personal development with a paycheck. So your ability to grow yourself personally will be directly resulted in the amount that you can grow your bank account or your trading account. And when it's all of what you focus on. So I, super successful people aren't, it's not that we don't know that there's a problem Teresa, for example, when she's leaving the trading calls, it does. It's not that she she wants to be losing or that there's a two percent loss. She just doesn't focus on it. So I accept it. I learn from it. I say, what could I have done differently with this? And then I choose to keep focused on what I want, not what I don't want. And that skill set allows you to because it's a piece of the package. It's a piece of life. And the people who are focusing on all the negative side of things will have a tendency to attract more of that than the people who say, oh yeah, that was bad. I don't like that feeling. Did I follow the rules? This is part of the game. This is a part of the package. And how am I going to focus on what I do want and then get their energy realigned with what they do want? So that that's usually what I try and do is I don't like it. 
I sometimes will have to walk away to recenter myself with that because I just don't want it impact. I don't want to be making any knee jerk haphazard reactions based on feeling. So I take the losses and try and evaluate who I am as a person, how I'm feeling at that moment. Do I have the ability to step back into the ring or do I need to take a break and get my energy sorted? So it's more about how I can, because your thoughts create your feelings. Mm -hmm. What you think about the loss is creating the feelings of the loss. And so once you get that organized, then it, it translates to different decisions on the charts. Fantastic. A lot of, a lot of emotional control. Uh, When that happens, if walk away, sometimes it's like, it's too hot there. The feeling it's there present. And then definitely the focus is like, this happened, but I will not stay there because I will refocus back again to what I want and do the positive. A lot of these things, I think a lot of people, we hear those in many areas of life and it's, it it might be easy to say those, but not that easy to execute. You know, I think well, like somebody here, here, yeah, go for it. Yes. So I was just going to say, it's really it depends on, it, it is like a muscle, your ability to focus on what you want to shift. It's, it's a muscle memory thing. And so for people who have never done that before, so many people can tell you what they don't want. How many p- people can tell you what they do want. And so you can tell right away in your mindset journey, if you know more about what you don't want versus what you do want the likelihood of focusing on the negative is way higher than on what you do want. And you can only create the good when you know what you want. Absolutely. That's actually, yeah, clarity. That's actually just to kind of plug this event that we do. um, We actually do an exercise like that at one of the mindset and trading retreats that we offer um, where we'll, we, in detail, go over what it is that we want in our life. And we'll take a holistic approach to all of the different dimensions of who we are as a person and balance them out and areas that may be stronger or weaker and do an assessment and then begin to define it with clarity what it is that we want in life. And then by reading those out on a daily basis, having them in front of us on a daily basis, it gives our mind a compass and a direction into into where we want to go. And so the mind, the the attraction, we begin to seek those opportunities and things to us like a magnet. Um, So it's the same thing in trading, just like you're saying, having that mindset of, of having emotional control. And when we need to walk away to take a breath, to walk away and take a breath, but having, knowing where it is that we're going realigning ourselves, stepping back into the ring when we can, and, you know, pressing forward and charging forward. And what it's even would you, like, yeah, go for sorry, it. just to interrupt for a quick second, yeah. it's even the, about what, how you feel about risk management. Like I've talked to a lot of people and they're like, I love the idea of that, but I think it's too risky and I don't want to, mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. And so I'll say, well, what don't you want? Well, I don't want to lose my money. I don't want to take too many risks. I don't want to feel, and then we go further. I don't want to feel insecure about where my money is. I don't want to have to, you know, they can say all of these things, but then when you flip it to the opposite, I want, I want security. I, I want the skill set to be able to compound my money. I want to be able to manage my feelings. And when you start talking about all the things that you do want, it's surprising how grounded and centered people become, mm-hmm. right? And they mm-hmm. can step into the journey rather than saying, oh, what if I lose my money? And what if I have all these losses? Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, what if you do? And what if you don't? And what do you want? And how do you man? And then shifting that on what you actually do want. And the other piece of that when I'm coaching people is writing out what who you need to be to attain that. Because in my world, you can never outperform how you see yourself. So if Mm -hmm. you don't see yourself as a trader and the qualities of those, you can't outperform that. That has to go first. So it's definitely, you're walking like parallel lines. You're learning the skill set of trading, but you're also learning on this personal development journey to be able to manage it because most people don't manage millions of dollars, but that's Mm -hmm. actually the goal when you're a trader. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Like there's this evolution of, okay, I can trade 50 bucks at 2% and make 2% or I can trade a thousand dollars and I can manage 2%. Well, what if your account's at a million? Can you manage 2% at that? 
What does that look like? How does that, so there's an evolution when you start out at the thousand, fifty, hundred, a thousand dollars, there's this evolution of who you become to be able to manage that and figure out what you want on that level. Like that's massive for people. That's massive for people. Yes, that is. That's, that's so beautiful. Um, there's a great book that I've read recently called Psycho, Psycho Cybernetics. Yes. And you've read that book as Maxwell well. Maxwell Maltz. Yes, definitely. Yes. And he talks about self-image a lot in that book. And it's a beautiful book because it, it, it begins with our self-image. Who are we? Who do we need to be to be able to energetically hold the amounts of money that it requires to be able to, as you said, trade 2% with a million dollars? And that goes back to what you had also mentioned about personal development, being an entrepreneur and that personal development journey and who you need to become in order to be successful. And I can't remember, you said it earlier, but something about it, writing yourself a paycheck. What was it that you had mentioned about personal well, development? I, yes. Yeah. Well, it is personal development with a paycheck, right? There like, you are. The more yes. you grow yourself with it. And, and that comes to, are you making decisions when you're trading like a seven figure trader? And I think people miss this as well, is that you don't get a million dollars and become a seven figure trader. You have to become a seven-figure trader first, and then the money comes after. So again, are you making decisions like a seven-figure trader, a multiple seven-figure trader? Who are you as that person? Is this what they would do? Because in any entrepreneurial journey that I've been in that has been successful, I act like I'm that person before the money arrives. It just Mm -hmm. arrives way faster when when you know how to do that. Yes, I think that's one of the biggest takeaways today. I absolutely love that. We're going to, I think that's what we could title this. <laughs> I, got, I got chills. Like uh, I had the opportunity to to be the cast manager of a tour. And and honestly, I didn't believe that I could do it. Like when when they invited me to do it, it was like, uh, would you like to be cast manager? I was like, no. <laughs> and uh, but I realizing what, what you were saying, I was already doing some of those things, some of those coaching, some of those team building, some of those like, things and they were like I think you will you will be good like we will put a good team with you and and you just do it and then I I did it I was had a chance to do six tours and it was like very cool but but yes you have to <laughs> you have to become sometimes before what you are going to do and then so thanks for bringing that up and I think it's going to be huge for people that are listening to go back to that like no I don't believe that I can do it like yes how will that person do it like if it's not you even how will Teresa do it uh, totally. Oh, she will not do this. Like, or, or I have heard exactly. now with the accountability, accountability partners that works very well for a lot of people that I have heard is like, would you tell this to your accountability partner? It's like, no, <laughs> you know, and it's like, why not? It's like, uh, because I'm not considering this and that is like, well, then consider it. And then boom, totally. then that immediately brings you back to that. Like, oh, this is a little bit of the identity and this is what I what I'm doing this moment. And yeah, very cool. Thank you so much for bringing all those aspects. This, yeah. Cora, is there um, anything in addition, you've shared so many great, beautiful nuggets today. Is there anything in addition that you would like listeners to know? I know that you are a mindset coach. Um, you provide this type of coaching for people and you can provide coaching for people who are on their trading journey, not only on their trading journey, but also um, network marketing, entrepreneurship, the mindset needed in order to become a successful entrepreneur, day trader, et cetera. Um, Is there anything that you'd like to just kind of share for listeners who may be looking to gain some insight from you? Oh, for sure. I, my passion in life is definitely helping people be their best selves and we, when I'm working with people, we figure out what, what that is. So it doesn't, and I typically work with people who just want to live their best life, whether it be in entrepreneurship, whether it be in trading, whether it be professional people, semi-retired people, people looking for philanthropic ideas of whatever that looks like, because sometimes there is that gap between who you're operating as today versus who you need to be operating as. And like any sports team, the best players in the world all have a coach because we all need perspective, right? We all, sometimes we're just on autopilot and functioning and we have 
there's, we know, but we don't execute, right? Like I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm still executing. And why is that? And so I help people work through that and design who they need to be to achieve their goals and give exercises and skills to, to be able to execute that on a very expedited level, because when you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. And there's some people, as Bob Proctor would put it, they're operating as a conscious or an unconscious competent, which is what I was a few years ago. I was super successful and I couldn't have told you why. And I started looking for a coach and then I was like, oh my gosh, okay, this is why I'm so successful. And once I realized what I was doing, and it's not what I'm doing, actually, the successful people, it's not so much what they're doing. It's how they think about what they're doing. Hmm. It's the Could you define that a little bit? What does that mean? Let's take the losses as the example. Unsuccessful people harbor and focus and get emotionally attached to the losses. Successful traders acknowledge them and focus on what they want. Mm -hmm. but that starts with the thoughts on how they think about it. So mm -hmm. when people are saying, I can't do this, I can't do the trading, I can't do whatever. And I'm really curious as why they're focusing on what that looks like. Or I've tried this entrepreneurial venture and it never worked out for me. It's probably how you were feeling about it and not what you were thinking about because our thoughts dictate our feelings, right? Absolutely. And where is your self-image at? As soon as we know what that looks like, where the self-image is at, then everything, all the pieces can come together. And when I'm coaching people, it's more about perspective and enlightenment. And I usually work with people who are hungry for more. They are mm. ready for a change because they see the possibility and the potential and they're they just want more out of mm -hmm. life. They want to do more, be more, have more, whether it be experiences, material goods, freedom. I'm all about the freedom. Mm -hmm. I'm all about financial freedom to be able to do what you need to do when you need to do it. It And it was the foundation of my life. I We needed to make some drastic changes in our life to give our kids the freedom. And without money and knowing how to make money from our phone, we would have been stuck where we were with our kids hooked up to drugs and our hands tied for the rest of our life. And it doesn't have to be that way. No. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's how it is. We are limitless beings. We're limitless. Totally. And when we truly wrap our head around that and we begin to seek ways to grow into that potential, and yes, hiring a coach helps us get there. And I like what you you mentioned earlier. It's it's that you help to um, have people have quantum leaps in their success. You help to catapult them to that next level and you help to expedite and move them into success in their journey you know, in a, in a quick manner. Um, and then we just continue that, that spiral of growth, you know, into a better versions and more expanded versions of ourselves. And I just love going back to that. We are limitless, but it's, it's truly believing in that, believing in ourselves, believing in our self-worth, you know, allowing ourselves to, to think of, um, and connect to who we are, that seven figure trader and, and, um, obtaining some of those qualities um, that are really going to help to help us get there. So a hundred percent, because we're not surrounded necessarily by people who for, for the most people, they're not surrounded by seven figure, multiple seven figure traders. And the, the people in our life, despite them loving us, they can love us into holding us back because they don't know how else to support us. And being surrounded by people who understand what it takes, having a mentor in the trading, have a mentor in the mindset. I would venture to say all successful people who have what you want, like if you're looking for the seven figure traders, they've had a mentor. Somebody mm -hmm. has been mentoring them because you need that um, third party objective perspective to help propel forward. It's, it's actually critical. On the trading side, on the mindset side, I have, you know, I'm with Teresa as well. And, you know, my husband and I don't, it's, we just find the people who've gone before us and get their help. There's, there's no other way around it. 
because otherwise you have to reinvent the wheel and figure it out. And it takes so much longer. <laughs> it takes so much longer. And it's tiring and we don't have time for yeah, that. <laughs> totally. Totally. We want freedom. We want to do what we want. When yes. we want. Yeah. So what does that look like for you? What does that ultimate for yourself? And I know that this is where you're looking to also bring people with you along, but what does the ultimate, like, what are some of your goals, your dreams, your aspirations? I know you've already lived some of those out by bringing your children to an, to a, a place where they can be healthy and you know you you've bought that time freedom for yourself with a with um a career that allows you to be with them but what are some of your aspirations beyond this that's a great question i i really love helping people i have a goal for myself to help 100 people create that freedom for next mm. year for themselves in a mindset capacity it doesn't matter to me the vehicle of it trading for me is um I feel like that's a piece of the package because you, it's just not dependent on anything. It's a skill set that nobody can, it doesn't, it's recession proof. We trade with the trend against the trend. Doesn't matter whether market's going up or market's going down. It's very, that for me is very attractive. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't think people, there's enough people who know there's another way. And yes. I just want to help as many people as I can do that because there are so many people who just, you just know what you know, you know what you're role modeled, you know what gets shown to you, and there's a discrepancy with that. And I know what it feels like to feel trapped and to feel like I have no choice. And that is the most uncomfortable feeling. And ironically, some people don't even know that they're in that situation right? They just think this is life and this is it without realizing that there's more choices. So yeah, my goal is to help at least a hundred people next year change the their life either financially or in a mindset scope. When the mindset changes, the finances follow. It just, it, it always, it always happens that way. So I'm I love just on a mission to empower people. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. There you have it, listeners. Yes. We can find Cora. She is on a mission to help 100 people within in, within the next year. I love it so much. Um, while I'm at it, you can book a call with Cora, and I will drop the link into the podcast uh, description. So you'll find where you can book a call with her. It's a discovery call, right? Is that? Yep. Yes, so people correct. can... And would you just let us know what that looks like, the discovery call? Yeah, absolutely. It's 30 minutes with me and you get to share what your goals are, whether you have them, whether you don't know where to go, what's working, what you think could be better. And then I help you objectively fill in some of the gaps of what might work to expedite that um, and to see if it's a good fit even for us to be working together because I'm not a fit for everybody. And I'm super transparent about what that looks like. The discovery call is not a sales call, but it's a figure out what's going to work for you to get you to your best self and living that freedom as quick as possible. I love that. Thank you so much. And you're also on social media, so we can find you at Cora Woodman on Instagram. Correct. Also, you're on Facebook. Um, and I'll also drop the, the link there to your Facebook profile as well. And just for all of the listeners, we just want to remind you that um, this podcast, Mindset and Trading, is designed to help all of us succeed in our trading journey. And so it gives people the mindset tips and strategies that they need to acquire to become a professional seven-figure or more multiple seven-figure trader. <laughs> we are also having a retreat in Bend, Oregon coming up. It will be February 19th through 24th. And with that, we'll be having, um, you know, workshops in personal development, in mindset. We're also going to be having uh, some training with our educator, Teresa Guthrie, who we've mentioned here several times throughout the call, who is a professional, multiple seven-figure earner as well, a very successful day trader. Uh, she will be there educating us, reviewing our trades one-on-one. -on -one. We'll have other educators there with us um, just really to help us hone in and look at some of the the 
maybe sticking points that we may be having um, on this journey of trading. It's going to be in beautiful Bend, Oregon. We'll be having mindset meditations in the morning, yoga. Um, we're looking also to have a traditional sweat lodge, a Native American sweat lodge, um, a cold plunge, which helps us also to calm our nervous system, helps us with our emotional control. So we're bringing in lots of activities to also really help us enhance our mindset um, but we'll also be doing some fun things like being out in the nature. There's horseback riding. Um, we'll be touring the town of Bend um, and we'll be nestled in 640 acres in the high desert of the Juniper Forest with the Cascade Mountains as our backdrop. So we invite you all to come. I'll also drop a link for the retreat as well. Uh, five days, sorry, Six days, five nights in Bend, Oregon. That's right. And for some people that have been following all this journey, we, we went in Tulum, Mexico, and now we went from the beach to the mountains. And then for some <laughs> people, it's closer. So for you to take the opportunity and have uh, uh, Teresa there, like a professional educator, and, and Jenny, professional holistic coach, and, um, and anybody else that, that comes and and yeah, we'll be, we'll love to have you guys there. So thank Absolutely. You so yes. It's a great time for us to get to know each other, have community bond over nutritious meals. And then I think one of the, the things that I like the best about it is the opportunity to meet one another one-on-one -on -one and to really deepen those connections that we have, because um, throughout this journey, there can be times where, you know, we might just want to give up and total and quit, right. Or, or, you know, maybe even if it's not um, or we just we just doubt. And so having that community of people to surround us and support us, like you had mentioned earlier, Cora, the 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 community is everything. Having that support system is everything. And so with that being said, um, one more last final question to you, Cora. If there is anyone um, considering that has been on their trading journey, what would you tell them? Um, who's, you know, maybe thinking like, I'm just ready to quit and give up on all of this. What would be the one thing that you would, that you would, uh, let them know or give, give to them as a piece of advice? I think when people are feeling like they need to quit, um, or historically quit things that they start is they don't, their purpose isn't at the forefront, how they're feeling mm -hmm. is at the forefront. And so you've got to go back to how your what you what your purpose in life is, because we all can do hard things, and you can do harder things when you're purposeful about it. If this is for financial freedom for your family, so that you don't have to worry about money at the end of the day, that you don't have to be at work for twelve hours a day, that you can put your kids through college, that you can live out your dream to be a yoga instructor in the middle of Mexico or painting tulips, whatever it is that you want to be doing, you have to go back to the purpose because there are always things that are going to have impact how you feel, but you can do tremendous things when the purpose is at the forefront. Oh my Cora, God. you Cora, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> the purpose of this 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 podcast at the beginning was uh, to promote the retreats that, that we're doing, and then for people to get to know all this world. And then the, the second purpose was like to do the mindset in trading to contribute for people's lives in that sense. And now we're with what you're saying is like finding you, for example, as a guest that that already has it, it works in the mindset. Uh, world and comes and has this combination and that gives for example it gives me purpose it, it, it I hope that people when they are listening they they call you and they are like wow actually this fits perfect for me and uh, this for some people they might not be even in trading they might be like you know what uh, I'm gonna call Cora send her a message Cora Woodman in Instagram and um, <laughs> and then they you, you you can change their lives you know so that brings more purpose uh for me and for for many people, and uh, I hope that this 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 podcast keeps helping people. And 
And yes, thank you so much for being in the show. Thank you for having me. This has been tremendous. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Cora. Absolutely. So we're going to connect to our why, finding that deep connection to our purpose. We're going to be thinking like a seven-figure trader when we're making decisions on the charts. And we are going to have quantum leaps by connecting to our self-image and our worth and holding that energy um, to who we are and who we want to be in this world. And so I just really want to say thank you so much for being on the show. I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that people have a place to go to help get, you know, gain, um, mindset coaching. And I just, yeah, I wish you all the best in your trading journey. And I know that we'll stay connected throughout it all. Um, I want to remind people that we do have the Mindset and Trading Retreat happening in February the 19th through the 24th, 2023 in Bend, Oregon. We will have trading educator Teresa Guthrie there. We are going to have holistic coach Jenny Trumpa, that's myself, as well as Tonio Gonzalez, who is our cultural connector. Um, we also invite you to subscribe and share this content with at least one person who also would like to compound their wealth, become financially free and live a life they love by design. So uh, the website that you can find us, it's www.jennytrumpa.net forward slash mindset in trading band. Uh, yeah. And there, as you can find all the information there. And thank you so much for listening and uh, have a great day. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much.